You guys loved the last tier list so much. So I'm at it again. Today I'm ranking the best sales and motivation and make money books. Who reigns supreme? Which book is the best? Is it Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss? Or is it Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Or is it any of these other ones I'm about to talk about? How do they rank up? Is Start With Why better than Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Stick around. This video is brought to you by Email 10K. Learn how to book meetings with billion dollar brands and take your company to the next level at email10k.com. So let's jump into it. Here's the list of the common sales books. I wanted books that I read and also books that people talk about all the time. And so I wanna rank these books here. I had Ankit, who is one of our assistants, one of our team members on the marketing side of things, put this list together. So this is the first-ish time I've seen this. I looked at it one time just to make sure I read all these before, but the first time I'm really digging deep here and I'm gonna give my reaction. Let's rank these books. By the way, if you disagree with any of these tiers, let me know down in the comments. Let's, let's get a battle going, a battle of words. Number one is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This book, if you don't know, is actually a really good one. This is all about mindset and creating the mindset of making money. Think and grow rich. Literally the first word in this is think. My favorite idea from Think and Grow Rich is Napoleon Hill talks about creating a mastermind of people from history, like a fake mastermind in your head of people from history or people you look up to that you ask feedback from on your decisions. So I actually really love Think and Grow Rich. The problem and why I won't put it as S, which is superior or supreme, I actually might even put it as B because it's also hard to read. I've had a lot of feedback from people that have tried to read Think and Grow Rich and just didn't love it because it was written in like the 30s or something. It was written a long time ago. It was written in 1937. Look at this cover. This is what the real cover should be. I love this. What do we have? We have this kind of cover. This is the classic cover. I'll put it as B. Now, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is the next one. This is also a standard one for sales and motivation and making money as well, because this is training on how to act, how to treat people like they're friends. A lot of haters look at a book like this and they're like, oh, you need to be taught how to be a good person. You must be some kind of sociopath or something. Well, I think even in today's, especially in today's day and age where we're all looking at computers and we're raised on iPads and stuff like that. I even, I can't even say raised on iPads. I feel like that is just not even cool. We're all raised on phones and whatever devices these days. You do need to actually be taught to be a good person and be empathetic. And for that reason, I will put this one up as an A. I'm actually gonna move Think and Grow Rich up to right behind it, also in the A category. But again, Seven Habits falls victim to the same problem of a lot of these older books, which is it's boring as f If somebody came in and rewrote them in modern vernacular, modern wording, and made them more interesting, then you could get a lot done with them. And actually, a few of these that I'm about to talk about do the same thing, so let's talk about that. The Wolf of Wall Street. A lot of people have seen the Wolf of Wall Street movie with Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> he's, he's the, Leonardo DiCaprio is the star and he's like this drug doing, money making guy. Jordan Belfort, who is the real Wolf of Wall Street, wrote this book while in jail. And honestly, I, I like it from an entertainment point of view. I read the actual book. I watched the movie. The movie does better vibe wise than the book. The book kind of reads like a novel about doing drugs and all this stuff, but it, it's a little more hypey than the, I actually really like the movie better. I will put the, the book of Wolf of Wall Street at the lowest tier, at D, only because if my question was, would I read this book again? I gotta put it as D. Cause I, oh, maybe, maybe C. Because I wouldn't, I would read a hundred other books before this book. And actually, if that's the category, now we gotta move some of these other ones down. 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Let's talk about it. Everyone loves Grant Cardone. I actually like Grant Cardone a lot. He's a billionaire, self-reported. Did I talk about, I talked about him in the other tier list and I'll probably talk about him in 
in the next tier list that I do, because I got one more queued. Don't you haters go away. We got plenty more tier lists. I don't care how much you guys hate this. This is what we're doing now. 10X Will by Grant Cardone. I like this because it's so simple. All he's talking about in this book is set a goal and then set that goal 10 times higher, which is something that the FANG companies like Google have been talking about for decades. It's not something that Grant Cardone came up with, but I love that he popularized it. And actually talk about books that get you hyped as I might even put this one in superior. I don't know. I'll put it as A right now because I don't know if we want to give the superior title away this early, but I actually really liked the 10X rule. Grant Cardone also gets personal with his story. He has this great backstory of being a drug addict and then he quit drugs and he had to keep pushing and he's definitely not doing drugs right now. And you know, whatever, <laughs> you know what they say. So I like 10X rule. I didn't say anything bad there. <laughs> I didn't infer anything that he could sue me about. The next one is Good to Great by Jim Collins. This one is way more of a textbook. Jim Collins went through a bunch of top companies and did an academic analysis of companies that went from good to great. Companies like, am I trolling? Companies like Circuit City. Circuit City is actually in this book. I can show you who's in this book. Hang on. God to gear. You can see some of the examples here are already starting to get dated, like Circuit City's talked about in here. Fannie Mae, who was behind that huge financial crisis is in here. Some are still doing good. Philip Morris is also sliding super hard. Walgreens is doing good now. Wells Fargo had a bunch of issues. But according to him, and actually why I like the book is, a lot of that doesn't really matter because it's about a certain time period. So during the 50s to the 90s, Walgreens was doing amazing. And yeah, they went through a little dip and actually they're starting to pick up again. So some of these examples are great still and the concepts stick around. I would read the 10X rule over Good to Great just for entertainment value, but I have read Good to Great twice. And actually I would put Seven Habits above this because Seven Habits teaches you more stuff. And if we're talking about, I, I love how I'm shifting these around by the way. I would actually put Seven Habits in terms of the qualities that it's teaching you going towards everything else in your life, Seven Habits is the best right now. The next book is Zero to One by Peter Thiel. I read this one as well. Peter Thiel, if you might remember, was the lead host of the Gawker lawsuit against Hulk Hogan after the tape leaked. But he was also a very successful entrepreneur, actually behind two companies, one, a bunch of companies, but two companies that I like. One was Facebook, lead investor at Facebook, and then also Palantir, which I had such a stock ride on Palantir right around 2020, where the stock shot up to $31, and then I bought a bunch of stock, and then it crashed down. And it actually took until, what month is it? It took until late January 2021 for the stock to even rebound to where it was in November. But I still like this. I didn't love this book too much, and for that reason, I'm gonna put it down here. And we gotta keep this moving. What, this video is so long already. Obstacle is Away by Ryan Holiday. Maybe my fifth favorite Ryan Holiday book. Ryan Holiday's favorite Ryan Holiday book, as evidenced by the fact that he got a tattoo of this on his arm. My favorite Ryan Holiday book is Perennial Seller, which I've talked about, or at least referenced in past videos, where he studies things that have been around for a long time and it talks about why they're around and not other things, right? Why are people still talking about Wizard of Oz and they're not talking about whatever other movie came out that same year? I'll put Obstacle is the way down at the bottom here, actually even below Zero to One, because Zero to One got me hyped up. There's another Ryan Holiday book that's better than Obstacle is the Way and Zero to One, which is also about Peter Thiel called Conspiracy, which I love as well. Now that I'm talking about this, I've read so many Ryan Holiday books, a crazy amount but I would put Obstacle is the Way really at the bottom or close to the bottom. The idea is great, and I respect that he likes the idea, but in terms of just how hyped I got when I read the book, Obstacle is the Way probably is the, one of the worst Ryan Holiday books. Even Growth Hacker Marketing is better than it, so here it is down at the bottom. Lean Startup by Eric Ries, also a tough book to get into. So Eric Ries went through, let me just give you some, some insight here, because I don't know if people even talk about this book anymore. The Lean Startup is all about taking your product, and if you're trying to launch your product in the market, you should instead of raising a bunch of funding and spending years building this perfect thing, you should instead build what they call a minimum viable product, which is the smallest piece of the startup that you possibly can to get market feedback before launching. And that idea is great. The book itself doesn't really talk about how to launch a lean startup, 
And that's why I actually have a copy of this book in the other room. That's why the lean book that I recommend is Running Lean by Ash Moria. Cause this one is actually step-by-step. Step. I had Ash on the podcast years ago to talk about this book, but this is one that actually got me into business, Running Lean. So I would check this one out over The Lean Startup by Eric Ries. So I'll put this one down here. I liked Obstacles way better. I liked Zero to One better. Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. This one is a bunch of negotiating tactics. I actually had Chris Voss on the YouTube channel too. It's sad cause I know a lot of these people and I'm ranking their books like crazy low. It's not cool, but what are you gonna do? This is, you're following me for the honesty, not for the corporate shill side. <laughs> Cause I could gush over all these books, but then what are you gonna do? How are you gonna trust my feedback on it? Never split the difference with Chris Voss. I did like better than Wolf of Wall Street. It's a bunch of negotiation tactics. In my honest opinion, I got everything I needed out of Chris Voss from the YouTube video we did. And some business books are like that, right? Like you're gonna expand in your business book on the same idea over and over again. Obstacle is the way actually has that same problem, which weirdly enough, 10X rule doesn't fall into, which you'd think 10X rule is just as simple as never split the difference, or actually it's way simpler than never split the difference and it's way similar to obstacle is the way. I just said the word way 50 times there. But 10X rule, he had a good ghostwriter or maybe Grant Cardone's just an amazing author he was able to expand this idea into a full book and didn't have it fall apart. You know who also did this really well is Patrick Bet David with his book, Next Five Moves. Patrick was also on the YouTube channel in the past and I loved Next Five Moves. That's actually one of my favorite business books of all time, but I didn't put this list together. This is on kid doing popular books. Maybe we'll do another one of book recommendations. If you wanna see my business book recommendations, which I've done a few on those in the past, but let me know down in the comments. We can talk about that in the future. How to win friends and influence people by Dale Carnegie. It's another classic one that's super boring. I'll put that here, I'll put that above Chris. I'm gonna move Chris Voss down to right above Ryan Holiday. And I'm gonna put Peter Thiel. Lean Startup, okay, I read the entire zero to one. I couldn't get through the Lean Startup. I got about 40% through and, and put it down. So zero to one because of that has to be a little higher and it should actually be higher than Obstacles Away as well. Maybe y'all are gonna hate me for this, but Rich Dad Poor Dad is one of my favorite business books of all time. Because, and here's why, rich dad, poor dad. He has a rich dad, he's got a poor dad. The poor dad is the one that he is born with, who's teaching him all of these poor people habits, like not being able to afford stuff is one of the habits. Instead of saying, I can't afford it, the rich dad's saying, how can I afford it? Little mindset tricks, and yes, I know Robert Kiyosaki declared bankruptcy, and yes, I know that he made up the rich dad and the rich dad never existed, but, if you remove the fact that any of this is true from your mind, don't think that this is a true story. If you look at it more like a novel, you will be able to still get all of these great insights. And Rich Dad Poor Dad is one of those that actually got me going in business. And for that reason, I'm actually gonna jump 10X rule up too. Cause if this is really like motivation of these books, like which books are actually gonna get you to start a business, this is one of them. Four hour work week. I'm gonna just pop up to Supreme. Four hour work week, at least when I read it, the time might've been different now, but I actually just reread it recently and still loved it. I was actually crying cause I was like, he was talking in the beginning about how he had this business where it was like freeing and he could do whatever he wanted at any time. And I remember listening to this again and just crying. Cause like when I first read that, it was a dream. It was something that I was reaching for. And when I was hearing it again, I was like, wow, this is my life. I actually did what I set out to do which is incredible. And that's four hour work weeks up at the top. This book and coaching with Neville Medora back 10, 15 years ago, whenever it is, got me to start a business 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago. For that reason, I will put four hour work week up at S. We'll see if it gets knocked down. Start with why by Simon Sinek. This is how Simon Sinek talks. I always wondered, like, have you heard Simon Sinek's audiobook? Have you heard Start With Why? Why does he talk in this? I can't figure out, I guess he's from London. I couldn't figure out what accent he's doing. That makes sense. Okay, so he's an English guy trying to do an American accent and that's why he sounds so weird. Start with why I will put up here, above seven habits, good to great is gonna be better than that. Good to great is better than 10X rule and Better than Rich Dad for me. When I was growing a company, Good to Great was better. When I was starting a company, Rich Dad was better. 
I love the examples in Start With Why as well. The problem with Start With Why and why I think I'm gonna put it here below Think and Grow Rich is it falls victim to the same issue. Start With Why is a TED Talk and it was based on a TED Talk and the TED Talk was maybe 15 minutes and that was more than enough time to cover the ideas. It didn't need to be a six hour, seven hour audiobook. And again, that's been done well in the past. Like 10X Rule did it amazing. Four hour work week also could have been a 15 minute TED Talk, but was expanded phenomenally well. Start with why just falls victim to maybe having not that good of a ghostwriter. And finally, Chris Gillibo, $100 startup. This one's decent. It's a lot of examples on startups that started with 100 bucks which also is good, but I wouldn't put it in my top 10. I'll put it in D. So if only one book can reign supreme, that's how this works, right? So the final list is here with the superior book being the four hour work week. If you're trying to start a business, grab that book. Good to great, second place, rich dad, poor dad, 10X rule, seven habits, think and grow rich, start with why. I'm surprised that's so high on the list. I'm actually gonna drop that down. How to influence people, start with why, Wolf of Wall Street, $100 startup, never split the difference, zero to one, obstacles away, lean startup. There you go. This video is brought to you by Email 10K. So you don't have a business idea, huh? Do you wanna know what the best business to start is regardless of market conditions? Check out the free presentation at email10k.com. We have over 200 students that are crushing it using this business strategy, even during this time. So check that out, email10k.com. If you like this type of video, be sure to leave a comment down below. If you hate this type of video, be sure to leave a comment down below and tell me everything wrong with this video. Stick around. If you want more of the other type of content that we make, the sales tutorials, the motivation, there's a ton of content that we've already recorded, over 500 videos, all about how to start a business, how to grow a business. So go and check those out. Subscribe for more content like this. If you want to start your business, you want the ultimate course to do that, check out email 10K. Smash that like button to encourage this type of content with the YouTube algorithm. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching. I'm Alex Berman.